Hey. 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 Has everyone filled out the census? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, nah, this is how my community. What? 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 The census daily determines funding for services and infrastructure in our communities. Like what? We'll show you. Hi everyone. I'm at the hospital right now, and a reason why you should fill out the census is because a lot of the money will be invested in hospital and healthcare resources. Hey guys, I'm at the park, and if you didn't know, filling out the census gets more funding for renovated parks and also creates safer playgrounds for children. Now I'm in Rhodes, and your response for the 2020 census, which includes every person living in the U.S., may help decide when and where roads and bridges will be built in your community. Hi everyone, now I'm at the school and the 2020 census will actually also benefit the school systems and education in general because there will be more money for teachers to support their students fully. Did you know it also affects the overall community? More than 65 billion in federal funding flows back to the states and local communities each year based on the census data. Wow, so the census really is important. Of course it is important, and that's why you need to tell your friends, your neighbors, and everyone you know to fill out the census so we can help our communities grow. What's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? So like you heard, um, the census is really important. So just to start off our happy hour cook along, um, really wanna encourage all of you to take a couple of minutes and fill out the census uh, because the deadline is coming up uh, at the end of the month. And so we only have a couple of days to fill it out and this is extremely important. So make sure that you do it and let's see oscar we're going into your kitchen now so you ready <laughs> i'm ready what's up how are you i'm doing all right how are you i'm good i'm good, good. yeah so <laughs> it's dumpling time yeah today's dumpling day like i promised weeks ago I think uh, Tofu Riot, uh, if they're tuning in, is going to be very excited about today's dish. I hope um, so. Yeah, let me, I need to get into, into Facebook and um, that way I can see like who's on. But yeah, so this is a pretty cool, a pretty cool dish. Um, yeah, tell, tell us, tell us why... You know, you chose this one in specifically with the ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Um, I So I like shrimp and I like pork and dumplings. So I just, <laughs> I literally, I just went online and looked up uh, shrimp and pork dumpling and I found like the first recipe that I could find. And that's the one that um, you guys are seeing if you followed along on if you've been following along on our Facebook page, uh, that's the recipe that's on there. Um, I actually don't know if what I'm um, making is follows that recipe very well. Uh, I just I'm assuming it will. I'm making this how I want to eat it. So um, you guys can follow the recipe. I'm not really doing that. <laughs> I just do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of the trend here. We just kind of go with the flow. So, you know, you do get a recipe so that you have something to work with. <laughs> but I feel like on, um, on you know, at game time, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's a little, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just, I just, like, this is also the second time I've made, this is only the second time I've made dumplings. So, uh this is going to be a kind of new experience for me also. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of know the flavors that I want, uh, which is why I'm not really looking at the recipe because I know what I want it to taste like. Um, but, you know, it's, it, is, it, is, it is what it is. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. I think it'll be fine. I think so. I mean, so far, I, right, I guess the disclaimer is I haven't tasted what you've created. Yeah. However... <laughs> It looks great. 
everything looks great. So, you yeah. know, if we go off of that, then yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah, I like to think so. I mean, <laughs> no, none of you are, have never tasted anything I've eaten and probably won't. So uh, we, can up, we can keep up this illusion for as long as it'll last. <laughs> Okay, well, now we're going to have to like put in a petition so that we do get to taste the next dish because I don't know about that. <laughs> well, all right. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to see how, how this is going to play out. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, um, let's get started. So I'm going to introduce all of our ingredients first. Uh, let's, let's do the cool angle. Cool. So uh, first thing here is we have Chinese chive, um, which is uh, a lot of people are familiar with. I, I, well, I feel like a lot of our viewers will be familiar with this vegetable. Um, uh, this is like a big, a big version of um, like normal chive. I don't, I don't know. Like normal chives are like these kind of like short, uh, like this, this big, like six inches long. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of herbs that are uh, slightly oniony and garlicky. Um, and you see them a lot of Western cooking for, uh, you put them in like mashed potatoes or I don't know. I don't know what you use those chives for, but um, you see them a lot in like grocery stores in these little like bags. Yeah. These Chinese chives, they're a lot bigger than Western chives are. They're a lot bigger and they taste a lot more um, garlicky. They have a very, very garlicky taste. Oh. Um, they're very strong. So, okay. This almost functions as like a, a vegetable where you can like cook this with something. Like uh, I, my parents would like stir fry this with stuff or like cook eggs with it. And it's a part of the dish in a different way than um, Western uh, Western tribes are. Like Western tribes are you mostly used as like a garnish or as like an mm -hmm. aroma, aromatic kind of thing. Um, this, while it is very aromatic, is definitely more of a vegetable than mm -hmm. so that's how we're going to be using it in our mix today our dumpling mix uh so i actually have a little bit of it prepared here so it's a mixture of pork shrimp the uh, chives uh and some other uh ingredients that i will um like introduce in a sec but uh mm -hmm. i'm going to teach you how to make that little mix today um and we start off with the chinese chive uh, we have a little bit of shrimp here. I just got, I went to like an Asian store, got like a bag of peeled shrimp and I defrosted some of it. So mm -hmm. that's some, um, this is some ground pork, got it from the same store. Uh, there's a little bit of ginger. And then obviously we have our dumpling wrappers over here. As you can see, the stack is very small. I actually made most of this already um, before oh. beforehand. So mm -hmm. dumpling wrappers, I have a little bit of water. Um, for people who've made dumplings, uh, like you guys will know what the water is for. If not, I'll show you guys later. Um, and then to flavor this mix, I have a little bit of uh, oyster sauce. Oh, so very, okay. Um, yeah, this, uh, this is very savory and slightly sweet. Uh, it's a really, mm -hmm. really great tasting sauce. Uh, very thick. I have some ground pepper. This, I'm just going to grind that out of this. Got some salt. You don't need too much salt because the oyster sauce is kind of salty already. Um, I have sesame oil to give it some aroma mm -hmm. and I have some garlic powder. Um, so normally for dishes, I, I like to use, uh, for various types of dishes, I like to use regular garlic, um, like whole garlic and crush them and chop them up. But because we're using this in a filling, I don't really think that's the best way to go to get garlic flavor. I like to use, I'm going to be using this uh, garlic powder because it's not as chunky. And I really, I'm, I don't really want chunks of garlic, like pieces of garlic in, in my mix. Um, I'd rather the flavor be a lot more, uh, I guess, um, embedded in the, in the mix. And that's why mm -hmm. I'm using the powder today. Um, so, like I said, I I actually did make some of this, a lot of this beforehand. So I made like a whole different container of it beforehand that I used up to prep some dumplings. Um, this ginger here, uh, when I made this, when I made this earlier, I didn't use like uh, raw ginger. I didn't use this ginger. Um, I actually used the tube ginger. 
from my first episode. Uh, so I know someone at the time said that they like to um, chop the ginger themselves and smash it, whatever. I actually think in this instance, using two ginger is uh, not only more convenient, but probably a little, probably a little um, better than using you trying to trying to chop this piece mm -hmm. of ginger uh, just root. Um, super, super finely. The uh, tube ginger is already very fine, very mixable. It's very, very easy to use. So I actually recommend having a tube of that and using that instead of um, instead of raw ginger. Obviously, raw ginger is fine. It has a great taste. It's just taking a little more work. Um, so good, good hack there. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna prep all of this stuff. So the first thing is I'm gonna chop up my um, Chinese chives. Mm -hmm. And so Kim Kim Nguyen is joining us and said that um, my mom makes stir fry beef with the chive sprouts. Yeah, yeah, my mom used to do my mom used to do that too. Um, yeah, it's a very, it's very, very, but it's, it's a vegetable. It serves basically as a vegetable and it's very, very aromatic, smells really great. It has a really great flavor when you bite into it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a really great way to flavor your dish and also add some green uh, that is more, that is like a significant. Um, now I really want to try that because I, I, I mean, I, I love garlic. I love onion. I I like chives, so you know this seems to be something that I would I would enjoy. Yeah. So I chopped up the chives. I'm gonna put them in a little corner like this. Mm -hmm. Next, I'm going to chop up my shrimp. So we're going to. Uh, I'm cutting them in like big pieces right now, but. I'm actually going to end up mincing them, uh, mincing the shrimp pretty finely into almost like a paste. And that's what we want because this is going inside. We don't want really, really chunky stuff inside the uh, dumpling. So I've cut it into, put it, cut it pretty roughly into large pieces. Next, I'm going to just. So, and they're both, both the pork and the shrimp are going to be mixed together, right? Yeah. So I like the shrimp because it adds like a, a, a different texture to the dumpling that um, just pork or just beef or just one of these meats doesn't really have. Um, when you add shrimp into it, it has kind of like a, an additional dimension. There's like a little um, chewiness or like a springiness that you don't get with just chicken or just pork or just beef. So this is, you can see how kind of fine that is. This is almost like a paste. Like, look at that. Wow. Like a paste. So I'm going to scoop this up. I'm going to put it in with my chives off to one side. And then we have our pork here, which is already ground. So I'm just going to put it in. So now we have this collection of items. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, mince my ginger now. Um, I'm going to peel it a little bit. I'm going to take like a really, really uh, easy way of doing this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut off the parts that have skin the, this little like brown stuff on it. I know a lot of people don't, people might not like that I'm doing this because mm -hmm. it is a little bit wasteful on the ginger, but I don't really want to take too much time peeling. So I'm just cutting this all off. But ultimately you will be using that whole the whole piece that's left. Yeah. Okay. So this piece here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop it up like that. 
I'm gonna end up mincing this also. So I'm just gonna chop it as finely as I can and then go into it. My ginger, it's all fine. Just dump it in. I'm gonna wash my hands. And then I'm going to start seasoning this mix. I haven't mixed anything yet because I don't really need to right now. I like to keep it all mm -hmm. separate so I can tell this is kind of one third pork, one third chive, and one third uh, shrimp. Coming together. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna season this. I'm going to put a little bit of oyster sauce. This is about, for this amount, I think I'm using, I'm going to be using about one tablespoon. So that's about one tablespoon. You know, I don't think I have realized that oyster sauce had that consistency. Oh, yeah. It's very thick. Uh, this is about a tablespoon of um, sesame oil. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a little sprinkle of garlic powder. You want to add too much garlic powder. It's quite strong. I like the filling of my dumplings to be a little uh, peppery, so I'm going to add... a quite a bit of pepper and the pepper grinder is set on a fine ground um this is the finest grind that it can do very very small pieces of um pepper and that's because we want it to integrate well with the mix and i'm gonna put a little bit of salt just to sprinkle of salt and then I'm going to start mixing. Now, there's one more ingredient I haven't talked about yet, and that's the egg, which is going to bind this together. So I'm going to get an egg right now. Okay. And this is not that much. Uh, this is not a lot of mix. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in this mix I had previously made. So mix all of that up. Yeah. And uh, normally, actually, I don't think I'm going to add an egg to this because it doesn't seem too dry. So the point, uh, usually what happens is um, you can add like a whole egg or an egg yolk or whatever to uh, this mix of meat and vegetables. And what that does is it helps bind all this together. So you see how like it's, I can like get this and it's one piece. Yeah. Right. So that's what the egg helps it do. So this is already a pretty good mix. I don't really need uh, this extra egg here mm -hmm. to, to help me bind the skillet. So I'm just not going to use this. I'm going to put it back in the fridge. Oh, okay. Um, and that's it for the prep, basically. Uh, what? Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it for, for the mix here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to start uh, wrapping, like making the dumplings, so putting in the wrapper um, and then folding it or whatever. So this is, like I said, this is the second time I'm making dumplings. So I don't know how to do the, like, I, like when you buy when you buy dumplings, you see them with like the little crimps and stuff and they like look nice. I'm not going to do it like that because I don't know how to do it like that. Uh, <laughs> That's a technique. Yeah, it's I'm not pretty something... sure that's that takes time. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not something I know how to do very well. Um, my mom does it very well. She's made a ton of dumplings. I I haven't, so I can't <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a very very basic fold. Um, you see it a lot in like northern China and dumplings made in northern China. It's just uh, a two two, just like a, you just clamp the sides together. I'll show you in a bit. Um, okay. So let's just get started. Uh, so I have these 
uh, dumpling wrappers here. So I just got this from an Asian store. This is this is Chinese style gyoza wrapper. Um, you can get whatever you like. Like I know they sell like square ones that are like wonton wrappers. Uh, these round ones are the gyoza wrappers. Um, mm -hmm. And if you use these, you'll get more of the the shape that you're used to. Um, so these wrappers are pretty thin, so make sure to only grab one when you're when you're doing this. I just got two right now, but that's because I can't seem to. Is that kind of like what is it like the the rice, the rice wrappers? No, for spring is, rolls. No, I these mean, are not rice wrappers. These are actually made of. Um, no, but I'm saying the thinness. The thinness. Yeah. Uh, not quite as thin, I think. I think they're a little bit thicker, but they are really, really, really thin. Look at that. Mm, okay. Yeah. So first I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, filling in here. And I'm not mm -hmm. putting a lot. Um, like what would you say that it's, um, like you can compare it to, like... You know how they always say, like, oh, just, like, you know, get, like, a dime size, whatever. Yeah. Um, what would I don't you say know what this, this is. Like a half a ping pong ball? <laughs> I, I guess. Well, actually, no. This is, like, a ping pong ball. Um, this is, like, a ping pong ball in, like, width. So it's, like, a ping pong ball size. So what I actually like to do is I, is I like to keep um, about half an inch available all around. That's my, that's how I do it. Like it's about a half, okay. inch, I guess it's about a fingers, uh, like a fingers width all around. And okay. that's so that uh, I can give it space to be folded. So I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this water. I'm going to wet one side of this, one half of the edge. I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to crimp it at the top. Oh man, this is, this is the, this is the moment y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Grab it at the edges like this. I don't know. I don't know how this is turning out. This it feels okay right now. Um. So that's it. That's that's it. That's this is the first dumpling I'm. What? On camera. Oh wow. Yeah. So that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in this plate here. The plate has been powdered with a little bit of uh, flour, and what this does is it. I'm doing it so that it prevents some of the. When I add more dumplings on here, it prevents them from sticking together. Oh. Um, is that like all-purpose flour? Yeah. Okay. So what you just did right now, it totally reminds me of like a South American empanada. Well, even a Salvadoran empanada. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the filling is like, you know, slightly different. The, um, what is it? The, the wrapper, like you know, slightly different, um, but it, but yeah, but it's still the same. I mean, I think that's the cool thing about cooking. Like there's, there's a lot of universal elements or, you know, dishes that maybe vary in certain characteristics, but there's like this essence of that they, you know, that makes them all kind of a little bit of the same. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, actually, before we continue doing any more, I'm going to get some water and put it on the stove. Because I'm going to cook these. Uh, I'm going to cook these as... I'm going to try to cook these as soon as I'm done making them. So I'm going to get some water. And so when you say cook, you actually mean kind of like boil? Oh, or not boil, I'm sorry, steam? Uh, boiling. Yeah, so actually what I'm doing with these dumplings, so you can eat these dumplings in a, in a number of ways. You can steam them. You can also boil them, which is what I'm doing. Uh, and then you can pan fry them, which boiling is the first step to pan frying usually. So um, on camera today, I'm going to show you guys how to boil them and then how to pan fry them. Boiling is super duper easy. Like it's, it's, the easy, it's pretty much the easiest way to cook this. Um, and it's the most convenient way. So a lot of people just eat it boiled. Yeah, like mm -hmm. you'll make fresh dumplings and just boil them. Um, I'm also going to show you guys how to pan fry them because eating them pan fried is also really good. I like it that way. Um, yes. So two really easy ways to do stuff. So. so I'm going to cover this water and I'm going to put it on high. 
so that it boils while we finish up these um, these dumplings. So sweet, yeah. So um, so I'm in Pasadena, Texas, not California. <laughs> but can I just say I'm very excited that there's a new Asian restaurant just down the street from me. And the other day I went and checked it out, and they have some pretty good pan fried dumpling dumplings. Oh, you did. Very you, excited about that. You eat there? Yeah. Well, I have food to go, but yeah. But it was it was good. It was so good. What's and it then called? oh goodness. I need a I brought the menu so that I could, you know, call for <laughs> call in next time. But yeah, they had some good food. I'll I'll uh Pass the details along. And they've only been open for about a month. Um, I haven't been out of the house much. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. The really, really good food. What else did you get from there? Um, so I love like the wonton cheese puffs that anytime, like if they have it on the menu, I always have to get those. Yeah. But then they also had... Um, so a salt and pepper chicken wings. I wanted to check those out, and they it was it was good. Yeah, they salt, they, salt they weren't the same. Like I think it's our house in Chinatown where they have where they're really good. But like you know, Chinatown here in Houston, that they, they, they um, yeah, that's yeah. still. That's, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Pasadena, but you know, it's not it's not really a fair <laughs> comparison. <laughs> true. True. But yeah, so oh, maybe one of these days you can make that actually. The salt and pepper stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, uh, the only thing about the salt and pepper chicken and salt, salt and pepper anything actually involves um, some kind of frying, which is not something I do a lot, or something mm -hmm. I, yeah, something I do a lot just because I don't like having all the smoke, um, in the house. Yeah, but that is something that I really like. I really like salt and pepper shrimp. I like salt and pepper chicken, salt and pepper squid. Um, next week we're actually doing something a little similar to that. Uh, that I will tell you guys about at the end of the show. Uh, yeah, we're already talking next week, y'all. Like, uh, we're, th things are happening behind the scenes. Y'all have no idea. I. <laughs> I decided on this before because I, I, I just like I saw a picture of it and I really wanted to eat it. Uh huh. So I decided, yeah, I guess I'll just make this next week. <laughs> tofu Riot. Oh, Tofu Riot is in the house. Um, I think that somebody's really excited that we're doing dumplings today. <laughs> Good. I hope so. Let's see. What is the name of this new restaurant? Uh, I will actually go and get the menu because I, I don't remember, but I got the menu just, just in case. So before the end of the show, I'll, I'll make sure and pass the information along for anybody that's here in the Pasadena, Deer Park, Laporte area of town or Southeast Houston. Love the dumpling so far. So, hey, you're getting good critiques there. Thanks. Uh, I don't know who, who said that. Tofu Riot. Oh, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Tofu Riot. <laughs> okay, so that's that's all the wrappers that I have. Um, I made the rest of them already. So as you can see, we are uh, we didn't use all of the um, all of our mix here. I mean, I could use this for something else. I could make it into, I could put it in some soup or I could just make more dumplings, get more mm -hmm. wrappers. Um, but this is this is what I have right now that I've made today on camera. Um, I do have a bunch. Right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You did all of those? Actually, I didn't do all of these. Um, my girlfriend actually helped me out and do did like half of them. Um, but this is this is all of the uh, this is all of the this is all the dumplings we have. So I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cook these on camera. 
Okay. And I'm going to cook these, boil them first, and I'm going to pan fry them also. So sh just to show you guys how to do it. Um, so you look over here. We have our uh, water boiling. It's on a high boil right now. I don't know if you guys can see this. I think you have to move the camera slightly. Yeah. Maybe. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So it's there on a high boil right now. I'm going to just drop these in one by one. So the water actually makes the the wrapper sticky enough so that they won't undo. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, some people use like egg, egg to do this, like egg white. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's what my mom does. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. I actually don't remember. Um, but you don't have to use water. You can definitely use egg whites or egg yolks, whatever you want to do the binding or the, uh, um, the dumpling wrapper. So I'm just mixing this around a little bit. I'm agitating it a little bit because I don't want these sticking to each other or to the bottom of the pan. Uh, um, so I'm agitating okay. these just a little bit. And uh, you guys might be wondering how long do you cook these? Um, you cook these in here until basically, so what, when I cooked these with my mom, what my mom would tell me was, uh, you just cook these until you see them floating on the top of the water. And that's when you know they're ready. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do what mom said. I'll uh, keep it on the stove <laughs> until they're, um, they're, they're floating on the top. turn the well in the first in the meantime i've turned the heat down to about a medium high because um once we've introduced the uh we just put in um stuff that had flour and had gluten on it so though uh similar to when you put like pasta when you boil pasta um once you put something introduce something that has gluten in it it'll like froth up and then the water kind of spill over and stuff I uh, mm -hmm. turned this down to a medium high to avoid that happening. I don't want it to froth up and spill over. Um, so this is still boiling, but like you can tell from the steam rising out of here. It's still boiling. It's still bubbling, but it's just not bubbling so hard that it's spilling over. Uh, gotcha. While this is happening, I have my other little pan here, little pan, and I'm going to actually I'm not going to use this one. Oh, you're going to use another one? Yeah, I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my orange boy. And I'm going to warm it up so that it evaporates any moisture that's left inside. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to put the uh, oil and get them some oil ready to pan fry these dumplings once they're done cooking in here. Oh, okay. Um, so while the pan's heating up, while we're boiling this away, I'm going to make the dumpling sauce. So this is where I'm going to be dipping the dumplings in. Uh, I'm going to put a few things together. And what's the, I guess, what's the base for the sauce? Um... That's a good question. I don't know. I just put, <laughs> I guess the base is like soy sauce. Um, so I'm well, going to put some soy sauce. Yeah. And the reason I ask, because I feel like whenever I've had dumplings, the the sauce that comes with it has like the sweetness to it. And I can't quite place like what's in it, you know? Yeah. So the sweetness can be multiple things. You can achieve sweetness by just adding sugar. Or you can achieve sweetness by adding, uh, so obviously the sauce is a liquid sauce, right? So um, you can add a number of things into the sauce to make it sweet. What I'm going to do is I have some soy sauce. I'm going to add some pontu sauce to add, uh, add a little bit of a uh, little bit of a tartness and also um, some savoriness. So I've added um, like two or three tablespoons of 
uh, soy sauce, about a teaspoon of um, the ponzu. And then I'm going to add, you guys have seen this before, my fermented honey. Um, so I'm going to add about half a teaspoon of that. So this is sweet. This fermented honey is sweet. So I'll add some sweetness to it. I'm going to mix it up first and taste it. See how it tastes. <laughs> Okay, so it definitely has some saltiness, flavor from the soy sauce, and then the fermented honey is giving a little bit of sweetness and tartness. Next, I'm going to add in some chili flakes. This is uh, La Ganma. It's this brand, very familiar to, um, very, very, very familiar brand. Uh, chili flakes that are going to give it some nice red color and a little bit of a spiciness. So I'm going to taste it. Yeah, okay. So this isn't as sweet as the uh, sauce you might find at a store or in a restaurant. And I'm mm -hmm. going to make it a little sweeter by adding some sugar. Oh, okay. Yes, you can literally just add sugar to make something sweet. That's I mean that's what sugar is for. So um, mix it up. Let me give it another taste. Okay. This is about as sweet as it gets. So that was a really, really easy sauce. I mean, I don't even I, I wasn't really prepared to like talk about the sauce specifically because it's just it's really whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be saltier, add more soy sauce, add salt. If you want it to be a little tangier and a little more acidic, add vinegar, add some fermented honey, uh, some ponzu. If you mm -hmm. want it to be spicier, add chili flakes, add more laganma. And if you want it to be sweeter, just add more, uh, add more. Um, am I okay? If you want it to be sweeter, <laughs> add more sugar. Um, and, <laughs> And like, there's Not so bad. many ingredients you can add to this. Like, you can add lemons. You can add whatever you want. Like, this is just a sauce that it tastes however you want it to taste. Like, it's there's no rule for this. This is how I like it to taste. So this is how I'm gonna make it. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah, that's that's cool. And I, I think that's one of the really cool things too about, um, at least like my my experience with uh, Asian sauces, or at least. Whenever like we've gone to um, the restaurants that are out in Chinatown where you can like make your sauce and then they have like all these ingredients and then it's like pick whatever and you know kind of like start you know um, yeah. mixing pick the whatever. the different yeah the different flavors and I remember the first time that I went to the the hot pot um, barbecue place uh, on Bel Air okay. and um, and yeah, Debbie was like, oh, go and, you know, like you can you can do it this way and pick these things. And it, I mean, it was a little overwhelming my first time because it was, it was so many choices and I had absolutely no idea like how it would come out. But yeah. then, um, you know, I, it, it was a good experience. Like, I feel like every time I'm, I'm trying something new and it, yeah, like the flavors just, they're so good. Like once you mix things, they're so good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so the dumplings are now floating at the top. I'm gonna I'm gonna carry this uh, over to the camera so you guys can see it a little better. But we just look at this. Oh I'm wow! On top of the water, right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. scoop these out with this tiny, tiny scoop. <laughs> then I have a bigger scoop to use. It's like you're fishing. You're scooping out fishes. Yeah. So this was uh, seven dumplings. And I'm going to pan fry three of them. So uh, I've added some oil to the pan, the orange pan that has, um, that we're going to do this, the pan frying in. And, uh, once that's hot enough, 
I'm going to move a couple of dumplings over. So how much oil did you put into the pan? Like um, cover the whole the whole thing or so you don't need to add a ton of uh, a ton of oil. I put about I put about a tablespoon and once the oil heats up um once the oil heats up it's actually going to just be very easy to move around the pan and cover the entire pan with mm -hmm. so you don't need to worry about having putting enough in there to cover the entire pan you can put very little and have it cover the entire pan after it's hot enough um gotcha so I'm just while uh, while we're waiting for oil to heat up a little bit, I am boiling some more dumplings. So this is boiling now, and I am going to get one of these. And just put it into the pan. Oh, wow. So I just put three in there. You can probably hear it. Um, but it's just cooking away. And what we want to do here is, so I've cooked all of these dumplings through already. I cooked them in the boiling water. So the point of what I'm doing now is just frying them up so that it has a crispy layer on the outside, right? Which is what we want with mm -hmm. fried dumplings. So all this is- Oh doing, yeah. Yeah, all this is doing is creating a layer of crispness. So I don't want to burn this. I don't want to turn the heat up too high because it's already cooked all the way through. I don't need to cook it more. Um, this is just a taste and kind of like an aesthetic thing, right? So, um, I'm going to get a new pair of chopsticks and I'm just gonna check on the dumplings every once in a while. You might have to leave it on the uh, in the pan for a, for a little bit. Um, when you want when you want it to form a nice crust, when you want anything to form a nice crust, so this can be meat, this can be the dumplings. If you're cooking anything on a pan and you need to form a nice brown crust, the best thing to do is to leave it alone for a little while, right? Not too long, um, but leave it alone for like a minute, a couple of minutes so that it forms that crust. Otherwise, if you go in and move it too early, you might tear it. Um, yeah, that's yeah. the hard part, though. <laughs> so uh, just... Be patient. Um, I'm just washing these other dumplings right now while uh, the pan fried ones are just going. Be careful for the oil. So right now you basically have the ones that you're boiling and then the ones that you're pan frying. Yeah. Nice. And then the sauce is ready. Sauce Man, is dinner sounds like it's gonna be good tonight. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna check on these dumplings in the oil again. So they're starting to form a nice crust. So I'm flipping them over now. Mm -hmm. And so you're only doing three at a time. I'm only doing three of the pan fried. I'm only going to do three of the pan fried ones. And I'm only doing those three to show you guys how to do it. Gotcha. Um, I'm not cooking. The rest of these, I'm just boiling them. Yeah. 
man, now I really want to go to that restaurant <laughs> and get some dumplings. By the way, for, for those of you that were asking, Topher Riot, <laughs> if you're in the Pasadena, Deer Park, um, even Laporte area, this is the restaurant. Ah, hold on, there we go. Ramen San, and it's on Fairmont. Um, so it says Japanese noodles, but they have a little bit of everything. And I mean, this is not like advertisement, paid advertisement or any of that. It's just that, you know, it's a, it's a new restaurant, um, a new Asian restaurant in the Pasadena area. And I went and tried it and they had some good food. So wanted to give them a shout out. I, and I, guess, I actually don't know where I am on the camera because I don't have my glass. My glasses broke, so I can't see myself. Um, <laughs> You're good. Where I am. You're good. You're centered right now. Um, and then I only have the 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 full body camera right now. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So these have been frying for a little bit. I'm gonna check. See if they're ready. They're kind of cleaning to the bottom, so I don't think they're ready yet. Mm -hmm. uh, once it's ready, it'll naturally lift itself off of the bottom of the pan. See, that's always the hard part for me, though. Like, I know I need to have patience, and I know I need to wait until, like, it's ready, but... I'm I'm one of those like premature flippers where I'm like, oh, it's time. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was not time to flip. All right, so these are almost done. I just flip them around again to fry it a little bit more on on one side, and I think they're just about ready. I'm going to turn these off, turn this heat off. And here we have three pan fried, three pan fried dumplings. <gasps> OMG, that looks beautiful. Yeah, so it has like a nice, nice crust uh, cooked all the way through. One of them is a little, uh, is torn because it's tore while I was getting it out. That doesn't yeah. matter. Oh man. So, so I've got those three, and then I'm going to get one. I of really the want ones. dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have these three here, oh, and thing. then I have the boiled one. So I'm going to mm -hmm. eat one of each. So um, good tip over here from Kim: set a timer if you can't wait. I need a timer. That is a good tip. So I'm going to eat one of these. Wow, they're, they're hot. Okay, I'm going to add the other camera. Whoa. Okay, wrong setting. There we go. <laughs> right. So I'm going to... I'm eat one of these pan-fried ones first. Is it like triple hot because it's hot, like steaming hot, and then it's also just you and your hot spicy? <laughs> the, the sauce is not that spicy, but it is temperature-wise, it is very hot. Um, tastes really great. The shrimp adds a really great texture. Like I said before, it adds a really great texture. Um, it adds a very unique taste, kind of a little sweetness. Uh, the, the, the filling is really, really great, really flavorful, and the... The skin, the crispy skin is also just really, really delicious. That's the best part. Well, I mean, everything's the best part, but yes. I don't know. I personally, I just really like it when it has a crisp to it. I'm going to eat now one of the boiled ones. Okay. Yeah. 
we're just gonna dip it in our sauce. This is gonna be you very know, different. Mm -hmm. You know, they came out really nice. They look pretty. Good Thank job, you. Oscar. <laughs> the boiled ones are very different. The skin's gonna be a lot softer. But Still really, really great. Um, mm -hmm. The pepper really comes through. But that's how I like my fillings. I like my dumpling fillings to be a, a little peppery, a little gingery. Not as much on the salty side. And these dumplings really, really had that. So I'm really happy with these. Um, pan fried ones, very, very delicious. I'm really happy with how the skin turned out. It's a great compliment to the rest of the dumpling. Um, the sauce was very nice. It's a little bit spicy. And uh, savoring a little sweet paired really well with the flavors that are already in the dumpling, which are a little spicy with some pepper, mm -hmm. uh, a little sweet because of the shrimp, and savory because of all the other ingredients we have in there. Um, the chives really, really help. They add a bit of a crunch to the dumpling and um, that garlicky, nice garlic flavor also. So this is really good. Um, I definitely recommend, like, making some dumplings of your own. You don't have to do what I did. I just, like I said before, I cook what I want to eat. So I want to eat my dumplings this way. I'm going to put this stuff in it. Um, yeah. If you want to have chicken dumplings, use chicken. If you want to have dumplings that are spicy in the middle, that have spicy filling, make your filling spicy. It's all up to you. As long as you have the meat, you have, well, when you, as long as you have, it doesn't have to be meat. As long as you have a filling and you mm -hmm. have some flavor and you have some sort of binding agent i i was going to use an egg but you can very easily use something else um as like a binding agent it's very very easy it does take a little work uh, because of you got to prep some of these ingredients if you're going to make a lot of them you have to prep a lot of ingredients like folding the dumpling takes a little bit of time but i think the end product is definitely worth it that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So you can also make like a vegetarian filling, right? Like maybe yeah. with some tofu or I don't know. Well, I don't know about tofu, but. Um, or just I, different veggies. Yeah. So the first dumplings I made. Uh, so this is the second time I made them. The first time I made them, I actually made vegetarian dumplings. Um, oh. I made them with uh, mushroom. Um mushrooms and napa cabbage oh that sounds good yeah yeah that's but really you can make good. vegetarian fillings um you can make whatever fillings you want yeah uh, hmm. i wonder what it would be like with like cheese I'm a big fan of cheese. That's like that's <laughs> ravioli, dude. You just, you, if you want to eat ravioli, just, just make ravioli. <laughs> that's ravioli. I mean, you know, hey, I feel like um, if you're in Latin America or whatever, like there has to be cheese at the table. There, you know, everything that you eat. But <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it would taste great. I mean, they're uh, ravioli is it's basically like a little dumpling that is like cheese and stuff in it so yeah i think yeah definitely if you want to put cheese in it go ahead yeah it'll be, fine. It'll be great kim says invite your friends over for a dumpling party to help fold that's a good yeah that's that's a cool idea i know idea. yeah this is years ago when my sorority sisters had um a party and she had different stations. And so one of the stations, and it was like all sorts of like international food, like all sorts of stuff. But one of the stations was spring rolls. And then there was another, another state. But the, the thing is that like, we were all like learning and like folding and like all this stuff. And it was just really cool to like be there and, you know, talk and eat and learn. And so, yeah, having a, a dumpling party that would, also be awesome. Mm -hmm. That'd be really cool. 
Well, I think I'm actually going to go and buy some dumplings. <laughs> 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 so um great idea oscar <laughs> yeah um well i i'm sure the dumplings that are from uh the noodle restaurant will be really great um i mean dumplings rarely disappoint <laughs> so true yeah yeah thank you guys for coming today and for watching me make dumplings um i hope to Ryan, this was you liked this video because I know you have been asking for it for a little while. And I decided that this week I was just going to make some dumplings. Uh, so I hope you like this episode. This is your week. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And so what do you have in store for next week? Dun, dun, great, dun. great question. So I really, really like um, Sichuan food, which is like a type of like a, a cuisine that's that it's known for uh, having just really spicy, really flavorful food. Um, it's like a, it's a region of China that has spicy, uh, like savory cuisine. And what I'm making next week is um, going to be something called twice cooked fish. So, okay. I know a lot of folks have heard about twice cooked pork before. Uh, twice wow. cooked fish is a little different. So, um, earlier in the show, you had mentioned salt and pepper chicken or salt and pepper chicken wings. So the way you make salt and pepper stuff is you kind of have to fry, uh, whatever meat you're using or whatever thing you're treating with salt and pepper before you actually put it back into a wok and stir fry it with salt and pepper and, uh, mm. put that flavor on top. So what this salt, uh, what this, uh, press cooked fish actually is, is, um, we're getting skin on fish, so skin on fillets. We're gonna slice it. It's gonna be a white fish. We're gonna slice it up, and we're going actually gonna uh, coat it in some flour and fry it up. So we're going to stir fry these, or not really stir fry. We're gonna we're gonna put them in a wok and uh, cook it with some. Uh, peppers so some peppercorns some citron peppercorns some black peppercorns uh some jalapenos uh, maybe some thai chilies it's just going to be a very spicy dish so we're going back we're actually going back <laughs> yeah this is this is very you i already heard like four different types of chilies wow um we're actually, yeah we're going back to my uh spicy food uh we've spent a long time away from that Mm -mm. I mean, it's okay. We don't have to go back. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I mean, it, it, it you know, it, it, sound, it sounds good. Um, even with all that spice, I, I think that for, for those of you that like spice, that this is, you're going to love it. You're going to totally love it. By the way, Tofu Riot says, yes, the fried and boiled look great. Fried and boiled Ryan, dumplings. This, is was, great, this, was, so. this was for you. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> and guess who's on? What's up, V? V says hello. Hi, V. <laughs> you missed it. You missed my. You missed my dumpling folding and dumpling eating. Yeah, I mean, they actually look good, and this is only his second time. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad he's turned out well because I, <laughs> if they didn't, <laughs> whatever, I guess. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> I think, I, mean, I think your, your mom would have been like, yo, I mean, come on, all those years and you haven't learned anything. <laughs> I just, I'm not going to show my mom this. I, I, if, if this didn't turn out well, my mom just would never have seen this. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny well but yeah well, so so stay tuned for next week next week we're doing uh uh twice cooked sh uh, not shrimp twice cooked fish i'm really really excited for it because i really really love spicy food i like fish uh and i like fried food so um yeah for those of you who like those things 
tune in next week and that's what we're going to be making and i'm super excited to try it out uh yeah super hype yay sweet well yeah so next thursday 7 p.m our happy hour cook along um so come prepared to to cook some spicy oh. food and i can't wait so yeah. <laughs> oh i know you can't <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Oscar, for, um, you know, inviting us to your kitchen and cooking up some really good dumplings and for making all of us hungry, like me, to the point where we're actually going to go and buy some. <laughs> here's the recipe. I forgot to put it up um, earlier in the day. So here you go. If you want to take a screenshot of it. But awesome. All right. So everybody have a great night. Oscar, enjoy dinner, and we will be back next Thursday. All right. See you guys next week. And remember to fill out your senses. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey. Hey, hey. Has everyone filled out the census? Yeah. Yeah, of um, course. Oh, uh, no. Nah, this is how my community. What? 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 The census daily determines funding for services and infrastructure in our communities. Like what? We'll show you. Hi everyone. I'm at the hospital right now. And a reason why you should fill out the census is because a lot of the money will be invested in hospital and healthcare resources. Hey guys, I'm at the park, and if you didn't know, filling out the census gets more funding for renovated parks and also creates safer playgrounds for children. Now I'm in Rhodes, and your response for the 2020 census, which includes every person living in the U.S., may help decide when and where roads and bridges will be built in your community. Hi everyone, now I'm at the school, and the 2020 census will actually also benefit the school systems and education in general because there will be more money for teachers to support their students fully. Did you know it also affects the overall community? More than 65 billion in federal funding flows back to the states and local communities each year based on the census data. Wow, so the census really is important. Of course it is important and that's why you need to tell your friends, your neighbors, and everyone you know to fill out the census so we can help our communities grow.